Now let's also show that the forward backward algorithm or the inference of the HNM algorithm can be uh, done using the sum of product algorithm on the factor graph. Now first let us convert the hidden Markov model, the Bayesian network as shown in this figure here, into a factor graph where uh, we simply do a moralization of all the graph. Since this is a tree-like structure where any random variable here, there's always uh, at most one single uh, parent. Hence there is no need to, uh, we won't introduce any additional elimination click uh, in the moralization step. And in this case here, the factor graph would also end up to be a tree structure as shown in this uh, diagram over here, where the first factor, which we represent as chi over here, it's uh, the prior distribution of Z1 and all the rest of the distribution, which we uh, represent as G uh, and psi respectively, it represents the potential of the emission probability distribution as well as the transition uh, probability distribution respectively. We also further note that since G over here, the potentials of the G or the factors of G is over here, it's always uh, constant because we are talking about the probability distribution of an observed random variable conditioned upon a uh, latent random variable over here. And this means that this is always going to be a uh, uh, fixed value given all the different states of the uh, latent random variable. Hence, we can actually merge the respective uh, G into the linear chain itself. And we'll end up with a Markov chain of the factor graph that looks something like this in, as shown in this diagram over here, where H, uh, which is our prior uh, factor is given by the product of the prior distribution over Z1 multiplied by the conditional probability of X1 conditional upon Z1 and F over here it's uh, given by the product of the conditional probability the transition probability and the emission probabilities. Now we can see that the inference of this linear chain factor graph can be done using the sum product algorithm where interestingly we can see that the node to factor message uh, for example this particular message over here mu z n minus 1 to f it's uh, negligible this means that we don't have to compute this at all because this would be directly equal to the message that is coming into the node the reason is because there's only one other neighbor except for this uh, link over here uh, to this particular uh, node of Zn minus 1, which is this guy over here. Uh, because simply just because that we are looking at a factor graph which is a linear chain. Hence, we'll just look at the factor to node uh, computation over here because we we'll simply bring this guy here into uh, this term over here. Where uh, we can see that since we are looking at the message from factor to node, this means that we better marginalize off the Nielsen uh, random variable from that particular factor when we are passing it into another node. So in this case here, this example here, uh, suppose that we are passing a message from the factor Fn to the random variable of uh, Zn, we'll uh, marginalize away Zn minus 1 because this factor is going to contain uh, it's going to be a function of both Zn minus 1 and Zn, but we are passing the message towards Zn, so it better be independent of Zn minus 1 here. Hence, we are going to marginalize away uh, Zn minus 1 uh, and the factor terms which is contained in this uh, factor graph over here, as well as the message that is coming in to the factor from the other uh, random variable of Zn minus 1. So uh, here we can also see that as mentioned earlier that this term here is simply the same as the uh, message that is from the factor to note uh, message earlier on. The reason is because there's only one other neighbor connected to this random variable. Hence we can rewrite this uh, the message from left to right uh, in, in this particular form over here. We are passing a message of from the factor of Fn to the random variable of Zn will require us to marginalize away the random variable Zn minus 1 multiplied by the potential uh, or over the potential uh, of Fn 
multiply by the message that is coming into Fn from the, the other factor over here. And what's interesting here is that uh, plugging in the terms of which we have defined uh, to be the potential earlier, we can see that uh, Fn is actually equals to the emission probability multiplied by the transition probability. And this term of mu Fn minus 1 can be taken as alpha Zn minus 1, where mu of Fn uh, to Zn can be taken as alpha Zn. So as a result, we see, can see easily that uh, this message passing from left to the uh, right of the hidden Markov uh, model in the linear chain form, it's actually equivalent to the alpha recursion, which is the forward recursion, uh, which we have derived earlier on from the Bayesian network. So we can also do the same by passing the messages from the right hand side of the factor graph to the left hand side of the factor graph. We can see that again, the node to factor well, messages is, uh, can be ignored because this is uh, simply the same as the message from the earlier uh, from the earlier part of the factor graph and we can directly write the factor to nodes uh, marginalization so for example we are looking at the message of fn plus 1 to zn which is uh, this guy over here fn plus 1 to zn uh, we will see that this is a marginalization over Zn plus 1 because we are passing a message into the random variable Zn. So it better be independent of Zn plus 1 since the factor Fn plus 1 here is going to contain both the random variable. Hence, we need to marginalize away uh, Zn plus 1 as well as we need to also take into account the message that is coming into the factor node of Fn plus 1 here, which is simply equivalent to the message that uh, is from the earlier part of the chain uh, which is from fn plus 2 to zn plus 1 so this guy here we can simply uh, replace it with this term over here and as a result we'll end up with this particular uh, term over here marginalization term over here and then uh, by substituting in the definition of the factors which we have defined earlier on with the probability uh, distributions, we can see that this is equivalent to the beta recursion uh, algorithm that we have derived earlier using the Bayesian network. So one important thing to note on the forward and backward recursion uh, algorithm is that we have to introduce a scaling factor because otherwise the probability is going to go exponentially quickly to zero because this particular uh, alpha uh, and uh, beta recursion, it's going to involve the product of several probability distribution which is between uh, 0 and 1 and the product of uh, any numbers between 0 and 1 will go to 0 very quickly uh, if uh, left untouched. So in this case here, uh, we can see that alpha probability, it consists of three terms over here. It's going to be, uh, go it's going to get to 0 fairly quickly. and What's interesting here is that taking logarithm does not help because we are forming the sum of products of uh, small numbers. What happens here is that if we were to take the log probability of the alpha uh, values over here, this is what is going to we are going to get. So we will see that although we manage to resolve these two terms over here, uh, there is still a product term inside the log because there is a summation term over here which we cannot push in the logarithm to break out these two product terms. So this will still be a small number. And as a result, uh, we will not be able to resolve the uh, zero problem or the uh, underflow problem using logarithm. So we will therefore introduce the scaled version of the alpha uh, algorithm whose value will remain of an uh, order of unity. We will first define the normalized version of alpha by this term over here. So instead of uh, just the joint probability of x1 all the way to xn and uh, zn over here, we are going to say that uh, we are going to uh, divide this term by the joint probability of x1 to xn, which will give us this conditional probability. And this is going to be a well-behaved term numerically because this is going to be a, a 
conditional probability over just one random variable over here and it must sum out to one hence it's going to be numerically more stable than this uh, joint probability distribution over here so rewriting the forward recursion into the normalized form we'll start off by the forward recursion uh, which is the derivation or which is the expression which we have derived earlier so we are going to see that uh, this alpha term over here we're going to normalize it with uh, the joint probability distribution of the observed random variable so uh, we are going to do the same on both sides so here uh, this term over here is going to become alpha hat z m minus one which is the normalized term of alpha z m minus one we're going to also have the alpha uh, hat of z n on the other uh, means that we are going to divide alpha by the joint probability of x1 to xn so in order to make both sides similar to the original term over here or the uh, original forward recursion uh, expression over here we need to remove off the normalizing constants the two normalizing constants on both sides of the equation and this is simply given by this term over here so we can see that actually this term and this term cancels off and this term and this term cancels off to give us the original uh, alpha recursion equation over here now we'll but we'll let all these uh, normalizing terms over here or these constant terms here uh, remain and we'll rewrite simply rewrite the equation into alpha hat z n equals to uh, these terms which is a function of alpha hat z n minus one and we'll get the additional term uh, of c n which is e essentially equal to this particular expression over here uh, which we'll call it the scaling factor over here and as a result we'll get this particular uh, expression for the forward recursion where both sides consist of the normalized terms of the alphas as well as there's an additional term of uh, the scaling factor so uh, what this means is that uh, in a forward recursion suppose that we are given the previous step of alpha hat zn minus one we'll plug it into the same forward recursion algorithm over here the expression remains the same and the steps of the computation all remains the same but the result that we get would be this term over here so in order to get alpha hat uh, for the next recursion we need to divide we need to cancel out this cn which means that uh, the whole term over here on the right hand side we have to divide it by cn and cn is actually a scalar constant it's a scalar factor or a scalar constant over here that can be computed recursively as the marginalization over zn of alpha uh, tilde zn so we are going to call this term uh, for example in this uh, time step that we are or in this iteration that we are going to compute uh, this term over here and we are going to call it as uh, alpha tilde over here and then the next thing that we going to do to compute cn would be to simply marginalize this whole term over uh, zn here to get cn here's the proof that uh, the marginalization of alpha tilde will give us cn so uh, notice that uh, alpha tilde is simply this expression which is this expression over here and uh, we are going to marginalize over zn so in inside this particular expression uh, here we can rewrite alpha hat into the uh, original term of alpha divided by the normalizing constant over here and if we were to substitute this alpha z n minus one with the probability distribution of x n or x one all the way to x n minus one and z n minus one and evaluating for the marginalization and making use of all the uh, product rule and chain uh, and sum rule we'll end up with this expression over here where we simply can marginalize over zn and as a result we'll get this particular expression which is uh, uh, the same as the uh, definition of cn which we have introduced earlier on to normalize this particular to or to scale this particular forward recursion uh, expression over here we'll do the same thing for uh, the beta recursion we can do a same similar uh, normalization where we define uh, beta hat zn to be the original beta uh, divided by the uh, conditional probability of xn plus 1 to xn condition upon xn to xn 
uh, small n over here. So this is just a scalar uh, constant value that we can actually uh, compute. And rewriting the uh, backward recursion into the normalized form here by following the same steps uh, as we have seen earlier where we simply start with the original forward recursion and divide uh, both sides by the normalizing constant and multiplying by this uh, scaling factor to cancel it out such that this expression here is equivalent to the original uh, beta recursion uh, expression and what's interesting here is that uh, cn plus 1 is simply the same cn from uh, the forward recursion this means that we simply need to do a forward recursion and compute all the cn from c1 all the way to cn over here and then in the backward recursion uh, we can uh, reuse all the cns that is computed from the earlier uh, forward recursion here's the proof that uh, is actually equivalent we can see that uh, cn plus one over here is uh, defined by this term over here uh, by plugging in this to uh, such that the normalization constant cancels off to recover the original backward recursion algorithm and further evaluating these expressions over here we can make use of a chain rule to get this expression and the denominator to get this expression where the, these two terms over can, uh, it cancels off and these two terms sort position we can see that cm plus one uh, it's, uh, can be defined by uh, this constant term over here the division of the two constant term over here the joint probability of x1 to xn plus one divided by the joint probability of x1 to xn which is simply the same definition as what we have seen uh, earlier for cn so cn plus one simply means that this will become uh, plus one and this will become xn over here which is exactly uh, these terms over here this means that we can reuse the scaling factor uh, from the forward recursion in the backward recursion and as a result of the forward backward algorithm or the scale forward backward algorithm where we compute uh, alpha hat and beta hat we can directly make use of this to compute gamma so there is no need to do a, a normalization over here we'll simply make use of these two recursion uh, in the normalized form or in the scaled form to compute gamma so here's the proof that is the same thing uh, gamma z of n uh, is equals to alpha hat multiplied by beta hat so we can see that these guys over here are simply alpha hat and the definition of uh, beta hat respectively and we can further evaluate the normalizing constant over here uh, using the uh, product rule we'll get these terms here where we can cancel off this and get uh, alpha beta uh, divided by the joint probability distribution of all the observations which is equivalent to uh, the original gamma zn and uh, we can also compute uh, psi over here over zn minus one and zn uh, using this term over here where using the alpha hat and beta hat that we have uh, computed using the scaled version of the forward uh, and backward recursion and normalize these terms by uh, cn this means that we have to divide it by cn or cn multiply it by cn inverse so we can prove that these are equivalent by uh, simply writing out the expression over here we can see that this term over here uh, it's uh, one over cn and this term over here is alpha hat as well as this term over here is equivalent to uh, beta hat and uh, by applying the, the cancellation uh, as well as the product rule we can see that uh, finally we will end up with this expression over here which is equivalent to our uh, zeta of uh, zn minus one and zn now the initialization of the scale uh, forward and backward algorithm uh, is as follows we will initialize alpha hat z1 to be equals to alpha uh, z1 divided by p of x1 uh, as following the uh, definition of the scale version of alpha so in this case here it would be simply equals to the joint probability distribution of x1 z1 divided by the marginalization over z1 uh, on the joint probability distribution of x1 z1 where uh, this guy over here can be simply evaluated as pz1 multiplied by px over z1 as given by the uh, graphical model of x1 and z1 over here 
we'll initialize uh, beta hat z capital N equals to 1. So this is the same initialization as beta z n, which is also equals to 1. Uh, here's the proof on uh, this is true, where we'll simply start off by uh, writing the gamma uh, z n function. And this is equals to uh, alpha hat multiplied by beta hat as we have uh, defined earlier. So this is uh, equivalent to uh, alpha hat multiplied by beta divided by a normalizer, a normalizing uh, constant over here. And uh, we'll marginalize over both sides uh, on uh, Zn. So this means that uh, both sides over here will marginalize uh, Zn away from uh, both sides. We'll get this particular equation over here. And we can see that by marginalizing over Zn. The left hand side here, since it's a function of uh, Zn and all the rest are constant, we'll get uh, the uh, value of 1 since we are marginalizing away the random variable of the Zn here. And then uh, this is going to be equals to the marginalization over uh, Zn, alpha hat and Zn where uh, multiplied by beta divided by a normalizing uh, constant. And what's interesting here is that uh, the, we have defined earlier that the beta uh, Zn, capital N over here, to be initialized to 1. So we can set this to be equals to 1. Uh, this means that we'll end up having a normalizer uh, constant to be also equals to 1, since we'll end up with the marginalization over Zn on alpha hat, uh, which is a function of Zn uh, only. And this is equals to 1. So uh, substituting this guy, uh, this normalizer constant, back into this term over here, which we have defined to be beta hat Zn, which means that this guy over here needs to be 1 over 1, which is essentially equals to 1. And hence, we define the initialization of beta hats to be equals to 1. Now, finally, we look at the Viterbi b algorithm in finding the maximal probability and the most probable uh, sequence of the hidden states for a given observation uh, sequence. So this would be the same as before, where we want to simply uh, find the argmax over all the z, z1 all the way to zn, all the latent random variable, such that uh, we are maximizing the joint probability distribution of xn, z1 all the way to uh, z of n over here. And as well as, we are also interested in finding the configuration of z's such that it actually gives rise to the maximal probability uh, of the joint distribution here in the uh, hidden Markov model. And we should be cautious over here that recall that the most probable sequence of the latent states is not equal to the set of states that are individually most probable. This has been uh, discussed in the earlier lecture when we talk about the uh, maximal probability as well as the maximal probability configuration. Well, we will find uh, this most probable sequence in the hidden Markov model efficiently using the max sum algorithm or otherwise known as the B2B algorithm for hidden Markov model. Here, uh, we will start off by looking at the factor graph, the linear chain factor graph which we have defined earlier. So, uh, we will turn, simply turn the message passing of uh, the sum product algorithm into a max sum algorithm for to find the maximal probability as well as the maximal probability configuration for the latent random variable. And uh, as usual, we will ignore the node to factor message because this is uh, this involves no operations over here since we only have one nearest neighbor uh, to the factor other than the the other random variable that we are interested in passing the message to. So uh, in this particular case here, we'll directly look at the factor to node uh, message where uh, we'll define the message from the factor node of fn plus 1 to uh, the random variable node of zn plus 1, uh, which is given by, which is in fact uh, this guy over here that we are interested in looking, is equivalent to the max over zn because we are looking at the random variable zn plus 1 over here. So we better uh, uh, compute the maximum probability over zn since uh, 
this has to be independent of Zn over here. So we are going to maximize over Zn and we'll directly take the log probability. So without this log probability, these two terms are going to be the product of the factor over here as well as the message that is coming in from the previous step. So since this message over here, it's already consisting of the log. This means that the log term is actually inside this particular message, which we have received from the previous factor to random variable node. So we can directly replace this guy here with this guy. And uh, this is what we are going to end up with. We can rewrite this term over here, the message as omega uh, zn. So since we have replaced uh, this guy over here with this guy, which is equivalent to omega uh, zn as we have defined earlier, and this term over here would be omega of zn plus 1. This means that the whole algorithm, the V2B algorithm, will end up to be simply a recursive algorithm where we simply compute the first message over zn, where we will simply take over the sum of the log transition probability over here, which is given by the probability of zn plus 1 condition upon zn, and uh, we'll take the max of this over zn. So over the zn, uh, which uh, zn taking different states over here. And then we'll add this to the log probability of our emission probability, which is the observation probability over here. So which means that this can be computed uh, recursively. So this is the proof that which I have already mentioned, starting off from this particular equation over here, where this is our emission uh, probability multiplied by the transition probability, we can see that uh, these two terms over here, taking the log, it becomes two uh, additional terms over here. And uh, what happens here is that this term is independent of Zn. So we can actually pull it out from the max operator and it becomes uh, this term over here. And the other two terms would remain inside the max term. And hence, this is equivalent to the expression that we have uh, shown here. So it's important to note that there's no need for scaling for the V2B algorithm since we are already working with the log probabilities. So notice that there's no multiplication of the probabilities anywhere inside this uh, recursive function over here. And uh, one important thing to note is that we need to initialize the factor to node messages, which is the first message over here. And this can be uh, initialized to this particular probability uh, distribution which is uh, k by 1 entries and that's equivalent to simply the log of pz1 plus the log of uh, p of x1 condition upon uh, z1. So this is directly equivalent to the log probability over uh, these two terms, these two product terms over here which is our prior probability. Now finally the maximal probability of the joint distribution is given by the maximal of uh, omega zn at the root node. So in this case here, we are defining the factor graph to be like this, where we are simply passing the message from the first random variable of z1 all the way to uh, the last random variable. And we define this as our root node. And recall that in the previous lecture, I mentioned that there is no need for a downward pass of this uh, message. The reason is because any choice of the root node would simply end up to have the max same maximal probability in this particular uh, linear chain. So as described in the previous lecture, in lecture 5, that the forward recursion from the leaf nodes to the root node will give us the maximal probability of the joint distribution of x uh, and z, but it will not give us the configuration of the latent random variables that gives rise to the maximal probability. And if we wish to also find the sequence of latent uh, random variables that corresponds to the maximal probability, we'll have to make use of the backtracking uh, procedure as described in lecture 5 to do this. Uh, so we'll simply uh, keep a record of the z values that corresponds to the maximal for each value of k. Uh, and when we do the uh, message passing from the leaf node to the root node or from the left of the chain to the right of the chain. This means that at every instance of time when we do the uh, message passing, we'll 
uh, simply keep track of what is the previous state uh, so in this case z uh, 1 over here uh, the maximum probability occurs uh, when z2 equals to 1 and when z2 equals to 3 over here so we will keep track of uh, which particular state of z1 that actually gives rise to this maximum probability and we are finally when we are finally done with the forward propagation we'll simply do a backtracing uh, of the, the all the configuration the path that leads to the maximum uh, probability and in this case here there are two values of the maximum probability or two configurations of the latent random variables that gives rise to the same uh, maximum probability so we'll start from here and do a backtrack over all the other uh, possible uh, paths to get all the maximum configurations so this is what I have mentioned earlier on when we reach finally reach the end of the chain we will do a backtrack of all the configuration of the laden random variables that gives rise to all the uh, maximum probabilities now in summary we have looked at in this lecture how to describe the joint probability distribution of HNM in particular with the transition emission as well as the prior probability distributions we have looked at how to make use of the EM algorithm uh, for the maximum likelihood estimation of the latent uh, random variables as well as the unknown parameters in the hidden Markov model we have also looked at uh, how this differ how this particular EM algorithm differ from the previous EM algorithm when we talk about the mixture model uh, and uh, we we'll have used the uh, forward backward algorithm to evaluate the EM al algorithm finally we look at the VTB algorithm to find the maximum probability distribution as well as the configuration that gives rise to this maximum probability distribution. Thank you.